Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I am Udayan Mukherjee. Most guests who adorn this show are VIPs in their own right. But my guest today is doubly so because as chairman of VIP Industries, he may lay, legitimately lay some claim to that very term itself of VIP. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Dilip Peramal, chairman of VIP Industries to the show. Dilip, thank you for joining in and great to see you again. Thanks, Udayan. It's really a great pleasure to be with you after a very, very long time. So, you know, Dilip, the last couple of years might, must have been tough for you because, you know, all sectors were hit by, hit by the pandemic in their own way. But, you know, your sector is you know, so dependent on tourism and travel and all of that came to a standstill with COVID. Uh, where do things stand now? Has VIP bounced back well? Has the market stabilized after that jolt? Uh, would you say you're back to where you were before the before COVID hit? <coughs> yes, I think we are back, uh, nearly back, I think fully back now. In the first quarter we did about, uh, we exceeded our uh, pre-pandemic uh, sales and we were very badly affected because we are entirely almost entirely dependent on the travel industry and which had absolutely stopped i mean people are not even going out of their homes leave alone traveling and another big segment of ours is the marriage segment is a big driver of our sales even that was absolutely closed for the first year and then we had a bit of a misfortune in the second year we had planned to the April to June is our best quarter because that is when the travel season is at full peak and also the marriage season. And we had made ambitious plans and in fact we revised our budget in the beginning of March. But within a week of that the second wave struck very badly and the entire first quarter was washed out. So we have had quite a tumultuous, quite a difficult period for the last two years. But now things are back and as they say there is uh, revenge traveling, the marriage season also is uh, very good and uh, so things are I would say nearly back to normal almost and in fact uh, we are seeing very good traction even in the second quarter of this year which is normally our weakest quarter but uh, uh, even the sort of segment, I mean the year-wise, quarter-wise sales also is, is slightly changing the pattern of quarter-wise sales and the second quarter has also become quite good. So mm. we are very, very optimistic about the future and I used to say before the pandemic that tourism is the fastest growing industry in the world and I think we'll get back to that very soon. Right. It wasn't just the pandemic though, Dilip, because there was this, in, in the middle there was this future group episode as well and it accounted for quite a bit of your sales, I mean, and that must have dented your revenues quite considerably. Are you over that hump as well? Yes. Well, we are nearly over that hump because Future Group had, at, at the peak, had gone up to 15% of our sales, which is very, very high. You know, that is as much as the entire uh, canteen stores, that is the retail wing of the Indian Army. And just one uh, customer, of course, with hundreds of uh, outlets had become very large and that was a big setback to us. We have now recouped 50% of that sales through other channels, through other uh, stores and uh, I guess a little bit more will also, it's difficult to identify what part of that sales is going to the MBOs and our own EBOs but I think gradually uh, we'll we are getting over that of course we took some financial hits okay. also because no, we throughout lost this phase i mean because of covid yeah. or uh, or probably not just because of it the one trend that we saw across many sectors is that some sense of what we could call down trading people prefer to move down to budget brands or lower the uh, down the price spectrum. Um, I, I mean, I looked at your numbers as well, and it seems like aristocrat and sky bags, which are lower priced items uh, compared to VIP, but they seem to have done or seem to account for a very large or increasingly large proportion of your overall revenues. Uh, would you say that this is a growing trend? The budget brands actually uh, accounting for a very print, lion's share of your uh, revenues? 
the move towards the value brand started more with the GST. GST was a great uh, enabler for, enabler for us because it really it it reduced the level of taxation, which was very very high on our all, all on all manufactured products and all branded products because there was a large excise duty. Then the sales tax was very high. The, in some country, in some cities like Bombay, the octroi duty was still existing at four percent, and all this was cascading. Like the octroi duty is on the our selling price plus the excise plus the VAT at that time. So GST subsumed everything at a rate of 18 percent. And even, even with 18 percent, we got some credit set, uh, input credit set off. So our net taxation would be about 10 percent. Of course, the further tax at the retail level, and in our case, the retail margins are quite high. But all in all, it was a very good move for the organized industry and for the country as a whole. And But that also migrated a lot of sales from the unorganized sector to the organized sector. And the unorganized sector is in the value brand. So the value brand segment increased. During the pandemic, what happened was the big impact on the, there was a big impact on the premium brands because they sold in all the malls and in the upper end stores which were all virtually closed in the first year of the pandemic and they, there was a gradual revival in the second year. So all the, these two factors combined has increased the value sector and our sales have now sort of comprised 25 percent. Now they comprise 35 percent of our total revenue, the value brands, our aristocrat brand from 25 percent earlier. So there mm -hmm. is a great move, but now I think as the all right. the big stores come back and all, and as our uh, value, uh, as our premium brands uh, increase, I think they will. We'll try and increase uh, the sales there also, but I think they might sort of uh, come to about 30, between 30 and 35 percent. So, how does all this? I mean, this trend affect the competitive dynamics in the market, Dilip? Because I mean, while it is fair to say that you've staved off the challenge of Samsonite quite well. In the last couple of years, we did see some market share losses uh, uh, for VIP. I mean, competition is quite intense from yes. not just Samsonite, but also from Safari, American Tourister. Uh, yes. You know, do you see yes. you yes. giving up more market share, ceding more market share in the future? It's quite an interesting uh, story. You see, we are about 52 years in the industry. We are the pioneers in uh, luggage, so we started off with a 100% market share. And it sort of gradually came down uh, in the early 90s. Uh, it was about, uh, we had 60% market share. Then we acquired Aristocrat, which was our major competitor at that time. And uh, so our market share went to even more than, uh, it went to about 75%. And then Samsonite came in and at, at, in the year, I think, 96. And then, they naturally took some share, though of course they have been saying that uh, they would become market leaders in the in three years. But I am very happy to say that even today, after 25 years, they have never. I mean, our market share today is about 43%, uh, and uh, theirs would be under 35%. And we are the only country in the world. Samsonite is the only multinational uh, company in the luggage space. And uh, they operate in more than 120 countries, I think. And they are the undisputed market leader in all these countries. And in fact, there's no number two at all. And India is the only country where they have never been market leaders. And uh, so we are very proud of that. But then Safari uh, was a very small company and it was acquired by my very good friend and our erstwhile managing director uh, in about, I think about uh, 10, 12 years ago. And he did a very good job in Safari and they were only in the value segment and they have increased their share considerably. And the pandemic has been very good for them because it, in the pandemic it was mainly the value segment which was growing because all the big stores were closed. So they have taken uh, market share. So we have lost, uh, we did lose market share till last year and our low, lowest market share would be about 41%. We are now at about 43%. Uh, we have gained market share in the current year. 
and our aim is to now reach at least 45% market share in the during the this year this fiscal year and we hope we can even get get back to high 40s next year you know the other thing which people got quite worried about when the pandemic struck with your company was how would you deal with the whole china issue because you sourced at that point such a large proportion of your luggage from china and it's been interesting to see how you've been reducing gradually your dependence on china by opening plants in bangladesh and other locations so can you just talk about this transition that you're going through because it's a very fundamental transition to wean yourself away from the chinese dependence yes Yes, absolutely right. You are absolutely right because not only us, the entire luggage industry, including the unorganized sector, the small-scale sector, is was dependent on China, and we were the first movers. We set up our Bangladesh factory nine years ago, and though for the first four or five years it it sort of progressed very very slowly, and we were hardly doing about sixty seventy thousand pieces per month, then we have scaled up considerably in the last. Uh, for 5 years and particularly in the pandemic uh, just before the pandemic we had reached a capacity of 4 lakh pieces per month and today we are at about 6 lakh pieces per month and i would say that uh, we have 6 uh, plants in bangladesh we employ 4500 workers and we have about 6 lakh square feet of built up space and all are 100% owned by vip industries so we are i would dare say we are the largest uh, manufacturer of luggage as a company in the entire world because my own feeling is that samsonite is the only company which is larger than us even by way of sales or in a, a, any other aspect we are the second largest uh, luggage company in the world but i think we are the largest manufacturer of luggage in the world at the moment so this transition has been uh, quite good but it is still a sort of work in progress because when we first started manufacturing in bangladesh all our input material came in from uh, china and the value, supply chain was entirely dependent on china all we were doing is converting the raw material the other input uh, components into luggage and now we are planning after the pandemic uh, china costs have become very high our volumes have gone up so much that we are now rationalizing all that and we'll buy from china only what is uh, really in the cheapest uh, product there we'll buy a lot from india and in bangladesh also so all that is a very detailed process it's very laborious it's going to take some time but i think gradually as uh, in the next 2 years we should be we should have the optimum uh, input uh, position input raw material and inputs and that will also save us uh, costs considerably mm -hmm. so i think the bangladesh initiative has been a very successful right. one and it was sort of uh, well thought of at that time now the lip sourcing is one part of the story i mean now that in the next couple of years you will uh, transition away to much lower dependence but you know many other companies across the world would be doing what you are doing with uh, imports from china but does that in a sense open up greater export opportunities for you as a company i mean through this chat you've mentioned your uh, rivalry with samsonite a few times do you see entering new markets or get reaching out to customers who do not want to be reliant on china and therefore expanding your export basket significantly absolutely i mean that has been my long term ambition that we should become a multinational company and uh and i like to take like to go step by step so at the moment our international sales are very very low not even uh, 10% of our total sales but it is my long term a uh, long term vision that we should become the one of the large means we are the second largest in the world you know luggage is a very very fragmented industry and uh, like samsonite has the other larger larger brand to me is also part of samsonite and there are hardly any other brands so uh, it is our ambition to become a very large player and maybe one day we can be the largest the problem is that our domestic market is growing so much that today all our own manufacturing is taken up by uh, 
uh, domestic market and in fact uh, the way the market is growing presently i think all our expansion will be taken up by the domestic market itself so that means that our international operations will have to be postponed because we cannot obviously buy from somebody else and sell abroad we have to make it ourselves or procure it ourselves in india we are i think uh, amongst we are probably the lowest cost pr producer in the world for watching the business today show i have been in conversation with india's largest luggage maker vip industries chairman dilip piramal now speaking of long term vision uh, dilip also i mean have you ever considered diversification said vip seriously but i mean at some point many years ago there was some talk about you getting into things like air conditioning or water water treatment uh, i mean what were those active plans uh, are they still on the cards or do you want to stick to your knitting of core luggage see this diversification was not part of vip i was doing it separately like a venture capitalist unfortunately that didn't work out and there was it was very much on the anvil i mean it was uh, very nascent but it, that didn't take off in fact in vip we have diversified into uh, ladies handbags which as a category is much larger than uh, luggage but we have not had the bandwidth in the last 10 years i would say that is one of my failures that uh, we could not develop that much of management bandwidth we had some ups and downs and uh, but that is another very large uh, market which we have to address and but i have to take things one by one i mean i it's no sense doing biting more than what you can chew so i have a very very uh, well important and interesting and potential market yeah. you know with ladies handbags you see in the world there is no all the ladies handbags yeah. are in the very very haute couture very high segment you know selling in thousands of dollars there's nothing there's no big brand which is selling retailing at under 100 dollars and that is the very good space i feel it's very similar to luggage in manufacturing and even in distribution you could say and i hope in some time in the next 5 years we are able to address that market in a significant manner well speaking of bandwidth and ladies handbags i mean you know your daughter in this is in the saddle right now and uh, she seems like the kind of person who could take up this challenge i mean has the transition from you to radhika been seamless in that sense i mean where do things stand on that front no i wish it was so but it is not happening that way you see vip has for mo most of its life since uh, about 1990 it's been managed by a professional managing director radhika came in around 2010 and as the managing director and for she worked as managing director till 2018 and then she wanted for a personal reasons to relocate in london she was living there for a while prior to coming here in 2010 she was there for about nearly 10 years prior to that and uh, now she has moved back to uh, london and has sort of taken a slightly uh, lesser role so that is not happening i have to make this company very professional we have uh, since 2018 again we have had a full time professional managing director and then uh, the last the incumbent in 2018 had to made a move uh, two years ago and our new managing director has taken charge of the ship uh, since uh, february 20 2021 and he's doing a very good job he's getting and and all of a sudden he had a lot of things you know the whole transition from china to bangladesh to, and we had a lot of disruption in india also and he is doing all that well and i think uh, by the end of this fiscal year we will be quite stable consolidated at the top level and we can think of uh, further expansion i am now inclined to think more on the lines of companies like marico and pedilite who have totally professionalized their uh, top management including the board and i am more inclined to do that and that is the only alternative available to me let me end by asking you a little bit about what it means to be 
a piramal part of a, such a successful business family i mean your brother ajay piramal has had a very checkered career as well and if i'm not mistaken all of you still live in the same house in worldly i mean what kind of equation do you share with him i mean are you friends uh, do you talk about your respective businesses give us well, some insight into what it is like uh, in the piramal household yes well i'll tell you now ajay has moved since a year he has moved to a independent bungalow very close to our house what happens with our family is that there is a lot of affection within the brothers now there's only two of us i mean i had a older brother ashok who passed away very early in 1984 and as the families grow we you know we have yeah. our own children get married and their families and all you get closer to the grandchildren and all so it's not the same thing but between the brothers there is good affection we don't interact so much i mean of course we interact on birthdays and other family occasions and the feeling is good but we are fairly independent and as a piramal i would say it's of course a part of a big family but what i would like to say in my case see the piramal space has been more occupied by ajay who's really doing extremely well in the last 30 years and his company is also has the family name piramal enterprises but with me what happened since i would say the early 80s that the vip brand became so large so well known it was the only one of the very few indian indian consumer brands in the 1980s even sort of very strong brands like merico and all developed in the 90s and later on means in the last uh, 25 years but virtually there was no other indian brand and the vip brand and there was no other luggage also uh, product right till the year 2000 you can say so vip was a very well known brand and that impact is something un sort of incredible i mean wherever i go in the country people recognize me my distribution is so strong we are there in every city in india every top tier town first tier town so whether i go to a small place like amritsar i have so many dealers and the dealers are so happy to meet me so welcoming because i we are very very ethical good company so our goodwill mutual goodwill between our top dealers and us is very good so that is something incredible and you meet anybody i mean it's like right from the prime minister you know i had once occasion to meet him and he said ah aapka product to hum hamesha use karte hain and so on you know and that is a sort of normal answer everybody knows vip <laughs> at least till the year 2000 then after that the whole indian consumer space expanded there were other brands and all at one time we were the top uh, 30 40 among the top 30 40 brands maybe even lesser but now we are probably only among the top 300 brands you know the whole consumer space has expanded so much but vip everybody virtually everybody knows so that right. is something for me even more than the family name you know the family name is known only for let's say top 10000 people who are in the business field but the brand recognition and what recognition one gets individually is also is something incredible you have every reason to be proud of it dilip and i hope your dreams of becoming a multinational come through soon and uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you thank you very much for joining me today thank you very much for that